yeah, what I brought to you. Uh, yeah, we'll start with a small uh, small introduction um, about me. I already did that about Suffolk Solutions. Then I will uh, quickly um, explain the Genosif multi-signature um, or Genosif safe product to you. Then I will explain how a multi-signature wallet, uh, what it is and how to set it up. Then I will uh, quickly show the Genosis safe components and the Genosis smart contracts. And yeah, at the last point, I want to uh, yeah talk a bit about the pitfalls on our route to Shimmer. And yeah. So yeah, what is Suffolk Solutions doing? We are a full service web free development and consulting company. And yeah, we're basically trying to close the gap between Web2 and Web3. So, yeah, <laughs> this is this is Aaron and me, uh, my co-founder. Um, this is uh, like one of the first images we took together in a company context. Um, yeah, two more images of us working together. On the left side, you can see me um, explaining, uh, yeah, some code to Aaron, obviously. And on the right side, you can see us obviously hacking something because we got the hoodie on on the screen light. Um, yeah, how did we how did we start? We uh, start um, um, twenty twenty one. Um, we strongly focus on web two projects, um, uh, implementing apps and websites, and yeah, even online shops and stuff like that. And that uh, and at the end of twenty twenty one, we um, switched more um, to focusing on web three and especially on IOTA, mainly because I'm yeah. Yeah, I am have to admit I'm an IOTA fanboy since 2017. And then I convinced Aaron to move with the whole company into that direction. So yeah, this is a basic overview of what we are currently offering. Um, yeah, I think everything uh, which is web-free web related um, and what you need to kick off some new projects. Um, on the right side, you can see um, a picture of Aaron, where he's presenting, um, um, or where, where he's holding a presentation on the IOTA Experience Weekend, weekend in Berlin. Yeah. yeah, we are also developing by our own several, um, yeah, several solutions um, like yeah, token creation, ERC twenty tokens, uh, different kind of NFTs, uh, D apps, and everything uh, you need. Yeah, to kick off projects. This is our current tech stack. I mean, we're strongly, like I said, strongly focus on IOTA and Shimmer. Um, but basically, uh, um, we can use every um, EVM chain. Currently, we're also having some small project on Polygon and Avalanche. Um, we used Truffle to deploy our contracts. Recently, we switched to Hearted and Foundry. And yeah, as an infrastructure provider, we are using mainly AWS for some parts, also the Google Cloud Platform. Um, when we are using, um, having projects on Ethereum, we probably have an Infura node. Um, soon, hopefully, um, I can add the Spice 5 logo as an infrastructure provider here. Um, yeah, and we are also um, strongly building on Docker and for that on Kubernetes, if you're not using, for example, AWS, ECS. Um, we are strongly TypeScript focused. Um, because of that, um, our backends are mostly built on Node. Um, therefore, we're using Nest and serverless framework. We also got some backends built in Go and Kotlin. And coming to the front end, we can basically build everything. <laughs> I, I, I'm also a small Angular fanboy. A fanboy, but um, since Angular got not uh, the uh, the big audience um, it should, um, we recently switched to um, a complete Next.js stack. There, yeah, some projects um, we did. Um, the first one uh, I want to show you is the browser extension we built, um, where you um, had the or where you can show your NFTs um, on the Shimmer net network easily. Um, since the last update of the um, um, of the testnet explorer, this 
plugin is actually a bit obsolete, but um, we definitely keep um, continue developing it. Um, there we are strongly um, connected to the Moon Moons project. Um, it's like uh, our Dundee project or Be Love project where we could um, implement all the weird ideas we have. And yeah, there's maybe ex what you currently plan is um, launching an ESC20 token and um, some NFTs and bringing really cool utility to the ecosystem. Um, but probably we will release uh, the tokenomics and development next week. So um, then you can get all the information by yourself. And yeah, that's a, that's a topic I want to talk about. Um, how we, um, together with the Auto Foundation, um, enabled Genosis multi-signature wallets um, for IOTA and Shimmer. And yeah. Not a case study, but uh, but our re recently announced partner is Spice Five, which I'm really happy because I uh, really believe in their product and in their service, and yeah, I'm really looking forward um, to 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 build the platform with them and acting as a consulting partner for a project which want to use Spice Five in future. Yeah, um, we are also doing lots of community work. Um, for example, hosting the regular stable in Stuttgart and Cultural. So if you want to have a talk with me um, in Stuttgart, um, feel free to join the regular table. Um, last year, we also hosted with Regine and Felix the IOTA Experience Weekend at the offices of Porsche Digital. Um, yeah, we also uh, were guests at the Monaco podcast and the Telegram, uh, Tangle Gang Telegram group. And yeah, the Moon Moons initiative, so we call it, um, will be something where we are actively supporting other projects and node owners in the Shimmer ecosystem. So, um, yeah, with that said, let's start with the actual presentation. Um, um, safe multi signature or Genosis multi signature wallets. Um, the, big, the big logo is the new one, it's just called Safe now. Um, they got the rebrand from um, the Genosis Safe Multisig, um, which was pretty confusing for us when we started because um, the migration wasn't fully done. So when we were searching for GitHub repositories, um, yeah, there were always a renaming and we wasn't sure, is this now the correct repository? Do we need to use Genosis Safe or just the Safe repository and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, Safe um, currently holds uh, a total of, of um, over 4 million transactions. Um, they are assets stored with a value of uh, over $39 billion. And the, uh, there are over 1.5 million safe accounts deployed. So this thing is really big. So safe accounts hold and protect billions of dollars in assets. And it can be run on all EVM chains like the Shimmer EVM. Um, this big sums basically comes from their available availability on different networks. So here's some of them listed. Uh, um, but the the actual amount I think is pretty pr pretty much bigger because um, the networks uh, listed here are the um, networks which are of officially integrated in the Safe app. And since there are lots of forks and separate deployments for um, other change as um, the, the actual amount is much bigger. And if you then include all the test nets where the same thing is deployed and running, um, it gets even bigger. Um, yeah, the Genesis Safe Multisig is trusted by uh, lots of big companies uh, like Shopify, Stripe, Polygon, Chainlink, um, also trusted by Vitalik. And I think that it's the image of the CryptoPunk from Raul Paul, which announced the, uh, I think the the, the ten thousand dollar value of Ethereum recently. Um, it's also trusted by lots of Shimmer projects, um, but um, I I couldn't manage um, to contact um, them before the presentation and ask them if it's okay if we will list their logo here. So you you have to live with the placeholders here, but I would say basically every, we are in contact with basically every Dex, um, which you could currently nicely test um, on the Shimmer network. Um, they are all interested in multi-signature wallets and yeah, for sure making uh, use of them because 
they are really professional in what they are doing. Um, the safe, the the whole thing, um, um, yeah, builds on on smart contracts, and these smart contracts are, yeah, Genosis says the most battle-tested contracts because they have been reviewed um, like hundred times, um, nearly uh, lots of separate projects reviewed them. They have also reviewed uh, them by by their own. They did several audits, um, and they also have a formal verification process in place. Um, this all leads um, to a bug bounty um, reward um, around one million dollar. So you find a bug, uh, you, you can get rich. Um, how to access the whole thing? You can access it easily by um, even a mobile mobile application app on iOS and Android, or you can I post it to to domains here. You um, access or the first domain leads you to the to the official deployment of the Genosive Safe. Um, the second one um, leads you to our deployment, which is currently a bit unstable. Um, I can explain you later why it's unstable and why it makes no sense at the moment to make it stable. But just to show you um, what's our vision, um, main, uh, the, the vision is um, to yeah, deploy it for all users uh, of the Shimmer ecosystem, um, maybe even using Shimmer or IOTA domain for that, but every, everyone should be here. Uh, um, have the chance to set up a safe by their own and make use of it. So, what is a multi signature wallet? A uh, multi signature wallet is basically a digital smart contract wallet. Um, yeah, smart contracts living on layer two. So, we are talking about layer two wallets. And it helps to prevent unauthorized access and ensures that transactions are approved by multiple parties, which does not directly mean um, you can not use it by your own um, or when you're not a member of a team. Um, um, you can also set it up for yourself and yeah, um, also benefit from it and prevent un unauthorized access, for example. Um, to fully understand how it's working, maybe start with a normal wallet. Uh, yeah, on the right you can see shitty Bitcoin wallet. On the left you um, you see a key, which um, is your private key, and with this private key you can access the wallet. And when you lose the private key, um, yeah, the access to your wallet is gone, and your wallet is lost, and all the assets inside uh, the wallet are lost. Um, the other the problem which could which could arise is that, for example, you get hacked and your private key is stolen, and which leads to yeah nearly the same uh, result. Um, all your assets are gone because somebody steals it. Yeah. So, and yeah, multi-signature uh, wallets will will help you here. Um, you can see the three guys, um, myself, Aaron, and that random guy I found on the internet. Um, all of them got uh, an own private key, so we are not sharing the same key. Everyone got their own private key. And for example, Aaron wants to do a transaction for the company. Um, he instructs the transaction. Um, we defined in the wallet that we need two or three co um, confirmations. So um, even the random guy or me has to confirm the transaction. Um, as long as not uh, second one or uh, uh, second one um, confirms Aaron's transaction. This transaction is pending, and yeah, I I know Aaron. He's my co-founder. I, I trust him. I confirm this transaction. Say this is fine. So he got the second uh, uh, second confirmation, and then the uh, uh, transaction is approved and executed. So you see the the main features um, are the multi-user support so you can um, set up uh, multiple users with their own private key so they don't have to share one key to get access to one wallet um, you can easily customize the security settings or you can set up the threshold how many people um, have to give the go uh, for a transaction and yeah the third feature is the easy recovery. For example, when Aaron loses his private key and not the whole wallet is gone, uh, there's still uh, Dom and me who can recover the key and yeah, maybe create a new wallet or fix that. 
yeah, the the benefits I mean are clear. It's an enhanced security, um, which makes the digital assets more secure. Um, there's also improved transparency. For example, when you use that multi-signature wallet, um, when you use that multi-signature wallet in a DAO, um, there's some kind of transparency. Multiple people can um, log into the wallet and see what's going on, where the transactions are flowing, and yeah, and yeah, it's an, some kind of increased uh, flexibility. I mean, you can do a lot more you can do with a normal wallet. And you can adjust the wallet um, so it matches your 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 company rules or your organization and group needs. Yeah, how to set it up? Um, yeah, I found this uh, image here. I think it's a game. <laughs> I never played this game by my own. It's called Sixty Seconds, <laughs> but it's uh, um, it matches to the whole thing because um, it just takes 60, sixty seconds to set up a safe. I will quickly guide you through. Um, here you can see we are connected uh, or not connected, but the, the Shimmer um, network is already selected. And then we then we click on the um, Create Safe button. Then this leads us to a following view where we have to give name um, for the safe. Next view, we can add the owners and the uh, um, their their corresponding um, addresses. And we also can set up the threshold, how many um, owners have to give their OK or go for transactions. Um, then there's another view where you can review um, all your configuration. And if everything is correct, you added the correct owners, you added the correct threshold, you can deploy the whole, the whole safe on the network. Um, then there are lots of Web2 services uh, starting to run in the background. I will explain it later. Um, but basically, all your Web2 services are watching, uh, or um, yeah, pulling, um, watching, watching the the transactions, and giving the user feedback as soon as it's created. So it's really smooth um, for the user; he doesn't have to refresh or stuff like that. So as soon as the, the safe is created, um, yeah, you get the nice overview. You can log in into your safe. You can manage your assets, your transactions. Um, yeah, even ca you can even set up the address book, connect other apps, stuff like that. Uh, you can maybe you saw on the screenshots before we are always connected to the Shimmer network. On this view, we are connected to the Girly network because currently we are expecting a little bug that we can't open safes on the Shimmer network. But I will also explain what's uh, the problem later when I come to the pitfalls on our road to Shimmer. Yeah, mm, now I want to explain you a bit about the whole Genosis ecosystem. And yeah, I always said it consists of lots of components. So yeah, I, p I picked here the, the most recent. I mean, it's the UI I already showed you. Then there are lots of Web2 backend services running. We got the Genesis Smart Contract, um, which are yeah basically the most important part. Um, and then there are also safe apps, which um, enable extra functionalities such as governance and fair auctions. Um, yep. So um, here's a more a bit more uh, a, a, a better um, overview of the whole architecture. Um, on the front end side, we got the web app and the mobile apps. Um, on the back end side, we got the, the client gateway, which acts as a um, back and forth front end. So the yeah, like you can see, the front end is only talking with the client gateway, and the client gateway um, speaks with um, basically two other big parts. Um, one one of them is the config service, where the complete configuration of the app is loaded, and um, the other part is transaction services or so-called core services, um, where, for example, the message queue lives, which is checking the chain and indexing transactions and stuff like that. And what you can nicely see on that image is um, also may, maybe maybe let's talk about now one small pitfall we already have when we started with the thing. Uh, we thought, okay, let's add the Shimmer button just to the front end so user can select uh, Shimmer network in the front end and everything should be the same. Um, this was our first try. And then we realized, okay, 
um, just to add the button, um, we had to adjust the config because all the networks and buttons, everything is loaded via the config service. So we set up in the next step the config service. Ma uh, we made the configuration for the shimmer network. Yeah, it was actually pretty easy. And yeah, then we realized, okay, the front end is not talking with the config service. It only talks with the client service. So then uh, client gateway. So in the next step, we set up the client gateway. Client gateway also relies on the core services. So just to do some simple changes on the UI, adding a button with a Shimmer logo on it, uh, you have to set up full-fledged infrastructure. Um, yeah, this is basically a summary um, with the, the technology icons um, behind it. So we got the Genosis Web Core, which is now written in Next. Um, before it was written Brain React. Uh, to, yeah, not before so a long time, they rewrite rewrite it completely in Next. Um, yeah, we got the contracts, which are uh, written in Solidity. We got the client gateway, which is um, basically an NGIX with a Redis layer. And uh, this one is written in Rust, the, the core of the service. We got the transaction service. Uh, yeah, which also uses Nginx Redis, also Postgres uh, SQL database, and a Django um, config service, also an Nginx Postgres Django. And then, yeah, at last component, we got the save apps. And you can nicely see, uh, for example, transaction service and config service, they're not sharing a database um, because um, all these services are. Um, um, yeah, strongly um, developed in a microservice um, architecture. So every service uh, manages um, yeah their own data and their own APIs, which is actually pretty nice when you're developing um, developing um, a single service. But when you want to deploy the whole setup, um, it's pretty hard uh, <laughs> because uh, you have to spin up all these different uh, configurations. And for example. Um, both services are normally um, using the default ports of the of, of the SQL database. Um, the whole setup doesn't work because um, you have to you can't uh, double the ports, and you have to do lots of adjustments to have really the whole ecosystem running at um, as a single instance. Um, yeah, how does it look like when it runs on my machine? Um, here's a screenshot from my Docker. Um, these are all the containers we have to spin up um, to have everything running. I think it was the dev setup is yeah around about 20 containers. Um, here is also running a Ganache chain for testing, um, which you later not need. Um, we also did some optimization because we said when we are now hosting the whole thing, we don't want to spin up like free PostgreSQL uh, databases um, when we are only basically managing free tables. Um, that's one optimization um, we did um, on this screenshot. This is a live screenshot from our Kubernetes cluster. Um, you can see there's only running one Postgres SQL, one RabbitMQ, and one Redis database. So um, we said, OK, we can uh, slim it a bit down. Yep. yep. With that said, coming to the Genesis Smart Contract. Uh, the Genosis uh, smart contract suite basically consists of two uh, things. There's one on one side the Genosis Safe, which is um, yeah, uh, which implements a functionality for managing owners and thresholds, submitting signature and transaction pre uh, submitting signatures or transactions, uh, reacting transactions. You can also um, allowing gas payments. So you can have uh, build some uh, relate. Um, yeah, relate gas transaction where the where the, con where the contracts pass for it, and you can enhance the whole thing by adding modules. Um, yeah, there's also proxy factory which deploys um, the the actual channels is safe. Um, um, you can see it on the right side. The proxy factory um, creates a proxy which is the actual safe. So when I'm talking about a proxy contract, um, I'm talking about the actual safe uh, which the user creates when he yeah, for example clicks in the ui um, and all the calls um, 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 to the proxy contract are delegated to the master copy contract to the to the genosis safe implementation where the complete functionality and logic is inside so 
um yeah maybe this gives some more um this this makes it a bit more clearer um so we get the proxy factory normally this has to be only deployed one time on the chain and this one is uh it creates a new proxy the proxy is then deployed n times and this is the actual multi-signature wallet and we got the genesis safe contract which is also deployed only one time on the network so i picked the two the two most important contracts here um and to explain it a bit more i'm i mean the proxy factory um yeah like i said <laughs> creates new proxies new proxy contracts and executes the function um, um and yeah okay yeah i already said that i don't think i have to say it again and yeah proxy proxy contract doesn't doesn't do much there's only constructor inside and the fallback function and everything uh is delegated to the genesis safe contract um the only yeah, important thing or the important thing this this contract is also doing is storing the state like the token balance so yeah this this image makes it more clearer um we got the proxy factory this spins up different proxies and all proxies delegates call to the genesis safe and why did they build it like that um because normally contract creation is expensive so when you're deploying a contract on um a big a big contract on ethereum it it's pretty expensive not on the shimmer network anymore um yeah uh, the deployment of the minimal proxy contract is cheap and as you can see um the minimal proxy contract is the thing which is deployed most so it's good to to make that part cheap and yeah, the expensive uh, master copy contract, um, v v which holds all the functionality and logic has to be deployed only once. Uh, talking about deployments, uh, I will cl quickly um, explain to you the safe singleton factory. Uh, the safe singleton factory is basically a fork of the Arachnid, which is a deterministic deployment proxy. The deterministic deployment proxy means um, or you use that one um, when you want to, to deploy on different chains and want to get the same address. So um, when I'm using the safe singleton factory um, um, and deploy my contract with with the safe singleton factory, I got the same addresses um, every time on every network, which is pretty nice because, for example, when I'm moving to a network and I want to use uh, the contracts or use my own web2 infrastructure and want to use, uh, but I don't want to use um, um, the genesis contracts by my own I can simply check um, if um, a certain address is already used and if the certain address is used it must be um, a genesis contract um, this is not necessary you can totally deploy all the genesis contracts by yourself but then you get new addresses you have to yeah save the addresses after the deploy step and then you have to put uh the saved addresses into yeah your configuration of your web2 services um because they are then not working with the default values given but all default values is only one single value and this these are these and the single values are the yeah fixed addresses which you get by the safe singleton factory um for sure this only works um if you got the um the corresponding private key and this private key um only um uh, yeah the, the, or the relevant private key is um at the genesis or the genesis guys are holding the private key so what you have to do if you want to have the same addresses for example now in the shimmer network um or what we are doing now are creating a pull request um, with our network configuration and asking them to deploy to make use of the safe singleton factory with their private key and our network configuration from the pull request to deploy it um and so the final result would be that for example on ethereum polygon and shimon all chinos contracts got the same addresses Yeah, here are some technical takeaways. I will quickly go over it. Um, yeah, they use lots of assembly. It's very gas optimized, the contracts. Um, they're using uh, a, li a linked list in combination with um, 
and, and integers to check if the address owns the safe. Um, yeah, the whole thing is segmented into modules. They require error strings, numbered error codes. Um, yeah, they are bit bitwise and with bitwise bitwise mask to retrieve data that is stored in data chunks smaller than standard uh, 32 byte solidity word. And they use block scoping within function within the function body to limit variable lifetime to uh, prevent the stack to deep error. So um, coming to our pitfalls on our route to Shimmer. Uh, first thing, I mean, this, the ecosystem of Genesis is super big. We really wasn't aware um, that there are so many repositories and so many different components and code snippets um, in this ecosystem. Um, so getting an overview um, of all the points we have to touch or we have to change was the first big step. Um, then the an, another another point where we really struggled um, and we talked with the Genosis guys was um, we asked them to add the Shimmer chain uh, directly to the official safe, but they are not doing that at the moment. Um, I think that's mainly because they currently not got not so many active developers. Um, for example, when you go to the Genosis Discord, um, there's also there's a there's a development channel, but it's closed, and it says if you got any development related questions, go to Stack Exchange and ask there. Um, yeah, the the whole thing is super infrastructure heavy, so. Um, when, when we first started the project, we thought, oh, nice, finally, full web free project, uh, which is consists mainly of smart contracts. Um, yeah, later on, <laughs> we, we find ourselves setting up Kubernetes cluster and managing lots of web two services. Um, yeah, at the beginning, I, have to, I, I said you have to say it, the <laughs> EVM was not stable. Um, yeah, for example, chain ID change, the RPC endpoints change, which really kicks uh, lots of our quick fixes and configuration stuff because the chain ID, you have to add it in so many repositories um, because um, there are so many enums and objects flying around where they are used in different services. So, um, and when there appears a new chain ID, the, every service is like, oh, wow, I can't work with that. Um, yeah, and last last one is Shimmer EVM is not yet fully production ready. Um, we we found an we found an error in the get storage RPC me method, um, um, which was fixed almost immediately after we reported it um, um, in the uh, IOT Foundation Discord. So big props here. Um, yeah. So what are our next steps for the whole project? Um, yeah, we finally have some internal tests as soon as the um, get storage fixes live and has been deployed. Um, after that, I think we are ready to go and everything should work. Um, we did lots of testing and debugging uh, to find this, this um, get storage error. So we are now pretty sure that everything should work. Um, then we are testing with some pre-selected pr projects I mentioned earlier. We are in contact with lots of projects which want to use this solution. And after that, we will officially release um, Safe on Shimmer. And then we will also release and publish every, um, a complete documentation, what we did, and also to publish the source code um, we wrote um, in, in the context of that project. And yeah, in, in future, we hopefully will to publishing it on IOTA. So yeah, with that said, uh, maybe uh, uh, one more point. Uh, what are the advantages of running your own Web2 infrastructure? Um, you, you're uh, yeah, in full control and you, you don't rely on third parties. Um, you can manage your service and scale them um, by your own. You don't um, have to worry about um, that your services are crashing. Um, yeah, with that, I remember I, I wanted to explain why our service currently is unstable. Our service is currently unstable because, um, yeah, it's, you saw it's running on a Kubernetes cluster and which isn't that cheap. And since it's currently not fully working, um, we decided to um, to size down the cluster on a, on a um, t T2 micro instance on AWS. So uh, when you now um, go to our deployment, I think it uh, you immediately uh, 
um, um, crash the server because it's so small. We will scale this up back to, yeah, I think we got an X2 large instance before. Um, so have it smoothly running. But when you got your own infrastructure, you yeah can adjust like you want. Um, you can also um, easily adjust um, um, or some features Genesis already offers you, and you can build features on your top. For example, if you want to notify third-party services um, or your finance department when a transaction is run, you can implement webhooks. And yeah, it's clear you can't do all this special configuration on a public deployment. Um, you can also customize the whole thing. You can brand the UI. Um, we also plan this uh, for Shimmer. We want to host it. Uh, we want to fork the Next.js application and yeah, just put the put a nice Shimmer logo on it, so everyone feels like at home. And yeah, you can um, configure um, the whole thing to work with different chains and even your own. I mean, one big benefit of the Shimmer network is that you can easily spin up your own uh, layer two chain. And if you want to have uh, multi-signature wallets um, running inside this chain and want to that the users can benefit from yeah Genosis solution on your chain, you can easily connect that. So if you need support setting the whole thing up um, or yeah you want to run your own infrastructure, you can you can call me. Or you can also call Aaron. He has his phone number. <laughs> and yeah, with that said, thank you. Thank you for being here. And if you got any questions, feel free to use the chat. All right. Thanks, Marcel, for, for your talk, for your presentation, your keynote. Um, we got a couple of questions, uh, at least. So uh, you're not done yet. Um, <laughs> but. Yeah, may maybe the first question from myself uh, as a developer because I was um, playing with Shimmer myself and um, was wrapping my head around the uh, IOTA smart contract um, documentation and stuff like that. And uh, I was just wondering, so you guys basically did the whole Genosis port, so to speak, of for the Shimmer network, right? And you didn't have any more roadblocks than that because uh, the way I understood it is that the ISC chain, um, ISC um, documentation was stating something like that. It's more like an, um, yeah, yeah, an EVM with uh, less features, like uh, I think the nonce and stuff like that are getting omitted, right? Yeah, but I mean, when you now look at the contracts, um, there's not so much complexity. I mean, like I said, the biggest thing we really struggled with the Shimmy EVM is that we got some strange opcode errors, uh, which was really hard to debug. Um, but yeah, I mean, th that was the error related to the to the RPC call we found. And yeah, I mean, we were playing <laughs> lots of around and trying to deploy the thing. I mean, one of, also one of the hardest part I, I didn't mention was um, to verify the contracts because, yeah, we wanted to use the block scout and <laughs> look into it if there's really an error um, and if there's really the correct contract deployed. I mean, we were comparing bytecode and saying, okay, it must be the contract, but um, yeah. <laughs> I can't personally. I can't trust bytecode. I have to see it in the explorer. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it's pretty. Hard, it's still pretty hard to verify. Um, I mean, sometimes the block index is running backwards. I think. <laughs> so it's, yeah. But yeah, we have, we invested lots of time to playing around with that. Um, yeah, we we definitely had the same issues with the SPT um, contract that we created. Um, just as you were saying, uh, most of the time it seems like the contract wasn't fully verified or at least on the chain yet. So we had to wait, what was it, one to two or three hours or something like that until how we did, could verify it. How did you fix the verification problem? I mean, um, It was fairly easy actually. I don't know if you are in the IOTA Discord. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, Kumar just um, posted some kind of resource. Basically, I'm using Hardhat as uh, the uh, development environment. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we we are using, for example, I, I guess we're using pretty much the same setup to verify. But uh, we always get the problem that the Block Scout Explorer API is returning 
uh, different error messages. And then I have to admit, we did something really bad. Um, we created some scripts, which are periodically trying to verify. I mean, this works pretty good for us, but um, yeah, it doesn't help the network because we are basically DDoSing the whole thing. <laughs> Sorry oh, about I, that. I, <laughs> but we got everything verified now. We are not DDoSing the Block Explorer anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that was exactly the issue we were having. But I was just waiting for a couple of hours and then it uh, solved itself. But you guys went for the smart way and uh, <laughs> automated the whole process. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, uh, very cool. So um, on back to the code maybe. Uh, do you guys have some kind of open GitHub repo or some sort of that we could maybe share with the community if they are really interested into that kind um, of stuff? Yeah, I'm not 100% sure if it's currently public. We got the company GitHub account and um, there should be um, the at least the whole Docker Compose setup um, published. But like I said, um, maybe it's also pretty hard to spin the the, the stuff we wrote in the um, in the repository to spin that all up because currently there's missing a good readme, I have to admit. Um, but we will definitely document everything and write a really uh, clean and understandable readme so everyone can, can, everyone can use a uh, repository without spending hours and figuring out how to run it. Yeah, I think that would be very interesting for the developers uh, here at TangleCon. Maybe just uh, give a quick update to Leah and she could also use our channels to push it out. Right? Yeah, perfect. If I you will do that. And yeah, only for the people that maybe try to recreate it or to also see how you guys um, made it. it. I mean, it is even some uh, exposure for you guys as well. Right? Yep. So we will be retweeting and stuff. Um, all right, and then we got one question from Arne Fuchs. Um, it's about uh, weighting of different wallet addresses or people. Is that possible with the Genesis Safe Wallet? Meaning, like, let's say you got three parties, and you say uh, we need at least uh, one signet. No, that's a, a bad example. Let's <laughs> say we have five parties, uh, and you say we have to at least uh, get five signatures. Would it be possible to, for instance, uh, wait one wallet uh, as it counts, say, for mm. two um, signatures? Spontaneously, I would say yes, but I'm actually not 100% sure. I mean, the quick fix could be maybe you could just add this is the same address um, as two owners or double, mm -hmm. double the address. Um, maybe this is an easy workaround, but I, I can look into it and maybe uh, we can... Uh, or we, and if we find out, we will set up a tweet. So all right, um, that, that would be great as well because I'm pretty sure that it's uh, it is possible on Ethereum, and if it's possible on Ethereum, it's most likely also. Okay, there's the answer, then it's possible. All right. <laughs> so I hope this uh, answered your question, Anna. And uh, then maybe a little bit of a personal question more towards you and not so much to the talk and the speech that you gave. Um, you were saying that you were an IOTA fanboy uh, since 2017, right? So you are you're, you're pretty old uh, dog, if I can say so, if it comes to crypto. Um, where were your beginnings or roots in that kind of regard? How did you break into that space, um, if you can still remember? Um, I, I, I think your colleague, Leah, um, also worked for Exeta. And I was also working for Exeta. And there was a colleague um, yeah, coming to me, showing me the IOTA thing. And I was like, OK, this makes totally sense to me. Um, yeah, we, like everyone, I also invested in IOTA. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to talk about that one um but we were pretty hyped and then we uh, started i think with the iota js library at the beginning of 2018 and um i think it's still online it's called something like play iota or the get iota online and it's a game um which we which is still hosted on firebase but we lost the admin credentials so we can't do anything <laughs> about it <laughs> but it's the proof that we built something in 2018 and but that was pretty hard to to get a stable a stable product because um yeah i mean it was a time i think when everything changed after that lots of um, i mean there was not using bytes and bits 
um, inside the library, um, the, the hash algorithm changed and I mean, the, also the, the ramp up um, was was re really difficult to to get into it, to developing because everything doesn't work like we 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 are used to it. And then I I, I yeah completely stopped um, um, developing something for IOTA like for yeah one one or two years. And then, um, yeah, coming back into the whole Web3 thing, I'm also looking at IOTA. It's still there. It's still still the project I love. And yeah, then we said, okay, let's focus now. And now we have a better chance to have a stable product than before five years. Yeah, and you uh, went all in, so to speak, off with the Starbucks uh, company. I mean, of course, you are still um, hired at some other places, but you are all in to Web3. Yeah. So you definitely see the future in that. And uh, that's exactly the same uh, thing for me and why I choose to work here and uh, yeah, do this awesome uh, event with everyone. Cool. Um, Believers. Yeah. <laughs> Believers, yeah, of course. But, <laughs> but it's cool to know that you were not only investing like uh, the rest, but also uh, developing and playing around with the technology. Yeah. Okay. With this, that I have to 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 tell you um, a small story. I was um, calling with my mom yesterday, and I was telling her, "Hey, I'm speaking at TangleCon, and I'm a speaker, and I have to prepare a, pr a presentation." And then she was like, "Why, Iota? Isn't this so depressing? All the investment <laughs> done?" And then I was explaining to her, "Okay, personal investments are not the same like technology and developing." <laughs> But yeah. <laughs> All right. So so you're behind the tag, like like most of us. That's good to hear. Uh, but funny yeah. that your mom uh, knows what crypto is. If I try to somehow talk about it, she she completely shuts off. Yeah. Funny. It's only depressing for her. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, but it um, makes me it makes me even even stronger believer um, and uh, technology uh, um, laughing uh, deaf, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, what are they saying? Uh, building a beer, right? So that's when you when you can get some real stuff done instead of in the bull when everyone in the whole space is colluded and everyone is like stepping over each other and yeah. projects are dying left and right. So yeah. I think the perfect time for that. All right, Marcel, and uh, thanks again for your speech and talk. Uh, do you want to have some last closing words as the last speaker of today's TangleCon? Oh, yeah. Keep it up. Believe it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it. All right, Marcel. Thank, Thank you very much, and uh, we'll see us maybe in the next TangleCon. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Bye. Bye.